Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the 2015 Land Rover Discovery Sport. Sorry guys, I'd say that slowly because I keep getting it wrong and I know there is a couple of different variations of this car. The Discovery Sport's the little one I believe and the normal Discovery is the huge like farmer one which are actually beautiful by the way. So, in the last video, you, <laughs> if you watched part one, Chris did keep popping out and kept scratching his head and then coming back in and telling me how nice it was. And in the end said to me, he'd really, really like to do some more investigation on this car. And do you know what? He was right. So we've pulled it in. We're gonna get it up in the air and hopefully we haven't got to drop that subframe down. It is monocoque, this vehicle, so you don't lift the cab off of the body like you do on the earlier Discoveries and Range Rover Sports. This one is, you know, it's just subframe under there. So, long as you don't have to take the subframe off, well, well, we probably will have to, but we want to get the sump removed. And once we do get that removed, that's going to tell a whole story in itself. We're going to see a lot once that sump's removed. We're looking for anything inside the sump and of course, get into the bottom of the crank. So we're gonna crack straight on with it today and start the process. Oh yes, yes, sorry guys. I did ring around and get a few prices for parts for the uh, Land Rover. And those big end shells were how much, Chris? All the shells. All the shells, 13 pound each. Yeah, very, very cheap. I don't know if they had the crank available, but Chris has found them available. So we're going to crack on, get it stripped down anyway, and then give us a bit more of an idea of what we actually do need. That won't be too easy, guys, because the under tray come off, covered Chris in water that had been sitting in it, and there's like a sound deadening pad actually on the sump. There was loads of little trim clips holding it on, and they've it's kind of loose there now. But it's start yeah, off. start motor's gonna have to come off, and there's a engine mount at the back that's gonna have to come off as well because it looks like it all bolts through the sump. Bit of a you can't get to the bolts with it on there. For the sump, can you? No, you can't. So it's no. got to come off. Separate. This is going to have to come off. So yeah. we'll just crack on and um, work on getting that removed. But yeah, quite a lot of work. Start the motor out. And can I quickly bend round the back there at that engine mount? Yeah. That yeah. engine mount there, this one here, actually bolts right through the sump. So we're going to have to whip all that out as well. There is an uh, engine mount at the top there, so it should support okay. That's obviously one of the back brace ones, isn't it, for rocking? Yeah, so stabiliser. Stabiliser, so we should be fine. But yeah, we'll crack on and get all that stripped out. There's not enough room under there for two of us guys and we are fighting against it and Chris just said that lower arm and that suspension Rob is going to have to come out so he's going to crack on and get that removed under there and then uh, we can carry on.
I stepped out there to go and grab some supplies and you could see Chris just cracked straight on, got all of those bolts removed. It was quite a bit, it was a lot of work actually to get that out. You can see he's had to take the lower arm out, completely undo all of that bracket there on the back, remove the drive shaft out of the transfer box. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a lot of stuff to remove. He has just pushed these bars in to start helping that come down. And you can see a little chain there with the weight of the slide hammer hanging on the sump, that side. And then this side, he's put a nut and bolt through it with a chain going down to a 20 kilo weight. Because the sump screwed on, just trying to put a little bit of weight and stuck on. Stuck on. Did I say, what is that? Screwed, screwed on, I did, didn't I? Sorry, it's glued on actually, stuck on. Just giving it a little bit of weight and using some release agent just to get it off. So pretty much now, just waiting for it to drop down. But if you look at the holes where the bolts have come out, you can see how much it's dropped down already on its own. So we'll get that off and then have a good look inside. I'm not sure what we're gonna find, but there's only one way to find out and that's pull it right off. That was quite hard work, guys. I think we've established that this sump actually doesn't come out without removing the subframe. So you can see I actually removed that bolt just to give us that couple of inches and drop the back one down as well to give us quite a gap. But it was still very, very tight. We've got the sump off over there. And Chris said that back dowel there, yeah, that's what it was hooked on, which is quite big, isn't it? And then it has got like a baffle over the crank, but you see little bits hanging out the oil pick up there. What you got, mate? Not good. No, that's not good at all, is it? That's not good. That's actually... Could be shell. It isn't could it? be shell. It feels thin, doesn't it? Could be, uh... Yeah, there's quite a lot of metal in there, guys. What are we going to do, Chris? Remove that baffle. We're going to have to, aren't we? And then have a, uh, have a look at the crank. But to. I can hear that. What? With your finger in there, I can hear all the yeah, metal. Yeah, it's very tiny, like, sh shavings almost. Yeah. So we get that baffle off and have a closer inspection, but that's not a good sign seeing all that metal in there. Solenoid, oh, it's got electrics going to that pump, oil pump, like a solenoid valve. So I've never seen that before. So it has, my hands are so slippery, my uh, camera keeps slipping out my hand, but. But yeah, you can just about see a big end there. Let's have a look, mate, let's get right just in there. Where my finger is, that's it. Right about there. That's yeah. the big end there. So, Let's get that baffle off and have a closer inspection, eh? Yep. Because we've not done one of these before, guys, it is just a case of working it out as we go. So I did end up taking that side cover off and the engine pulley there, and we've just removed the oil pump. That's definitely going to need a good clean out. That's got the little pickup on the bottom of it that we see all of the debris in. The baffle's ready to come off. Go on, mate. And that's when it exposes the crank. that crank. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> your problem. Yeah, it's got as well. Let me see the different colour. Yeah, give that a rock, Chris. Guys, that is the knocking that's that you your could hear. Big end. Your big end has gone. Only on that one. Well, um, we will take that cap off anyway. Yeah, we'll, and take, we'll take the mains off one at a time and have a look at them, but we'll have a look at that because that may well have toasted the uh, journal, crank. journal on the crank. Yeah. Well, we'll whip her off, shall we? we get that off. Might as well stay rolling, Chris, I think. You've got the tool there, haven't you? Bit small, that one, mate. That's the argument, is it? I think you... Uh... Are they 10s, are they? Yeah, it looks like it. A bit yeah, tight. Give, I will cut there, guys. I'm going to give Chris a decent ratchet to crack them off and uh, we'll whip the cap off. But that's definitely that knocking noise that you could hear. That's what it is. I actually want to stay rolling because I want us all to see it together. I don't think it's going to be a lot of bearing left in there. No, I don't. The most of it was um, in that oil pickup, wasn't it? Yeah. I think you're doing a new pair of gloves as well, mate. You've worn the thumb out on them ones. I have a little tapping stick, please. I don't know if we've got one out. Let's 
<laughs> no shell in there at all. At all, it's completely gone. Completely it could be stuck. It's stuck on there. Yeah, it's stuck on the journal. By the look of it. We're going to have to do spinner slightly. The engine to get yeah, so that you can get a bit crank. of clearance. Just turn the crank so she, that journal comes lower. I'm not sure how much of that you can see there, guys, but Chris has been under there and he said that that crank, let me hold that that way, that crank he thinks is actually savable. He's taken the cap off next to it and it's fine. We haven't checked any of the others yet. You see there's no play in them, but the one that he has just took off next to it looks fine and he's going to um, just a bearing, a main take a main cap off. off. Yeah and check that as well check that and then obviously have a good look around the crank there where that bearing was missing at the cap because there's a bit of it stuck to it you said didn't you a little it bit remains of it, of it remains yeah. a bit stuck on it yeah. but guys it has got quite late in the day now um <laughs> i need to get home and have some dinner so it's going to be a bit split this video back in the morning i always say guys don't know every day's a school day and you learn something new and chris amazes me every day this is actually the next morning. I went home last night, <clears throat> I had loads to do, and I was already late for my dinner. I had the missus on the phone. Chris actually stayed behind and worked on this for a few hours after I left last night, and he kindly recorded it. And what will be quite exciting, guys, is he actually talked you all through it as well. So we'll include that now and then continue on. So we started with some uh, 280 wet and dry, wrapped around the crank journal, and some pull cord wrapped around that three times, so that the keep even pressure all the way around it. And away you go for the next two hours probably. And then finer grit as you go. Let's get a bit done, remove it and see how it's looking. Let's peel it off and have a look. And that is getting there. And that is removing the remains of the damaged begin shell bearing. Let's put a new bit on there and do some more. Gonna be a long old job. Guys, I'll just watch that bit of video. It completely shocked me. I didn't expect Chris to do it. <clears throat> and I was really laughing. I said, you sound a bit out of breath, mate. He said, you would be if you sat there with that bit of string, pulling it backwards and forwards for two and a half, three hours you was doing that. It's longer than that. Oh, was it really? So a long, long time. And we're gonna get over there and have a look at the crank in a minute. But this is our bearing cap obviously off of the damaged one that was rattling. And I think you would agree, we got very, very lucky there. That's just oil in there, there's no damage. And this one next to it has got a tiny, what, what did you say, a bit of wear? Just, yeah, it's just marked it. Just it? marked it. So there is a little bit of a mark That's on this one. Done a lot of miles, isn't it? Yeah, like it, it has done 100K. Oh, and guys, I did say to Chris this morning, we're gonna walk under the car in a minute. I did say, why Why did you do that, didn't I? And th this is the thing. Right, so we established, and Chris, please correct me if I'm wrong, we established that the engine was knocking from this one here. And there was all bits of the shell still on there. And Chris has cleaned that up. Now, an engine for this car, I've done a bit of research. They're between three and a half thousand pounds and six and a half thousand pounds. This car has done over 100K. 
and Chris said, oh, well, I don't really want to rebuild the engine. We, it's done over 100k. That one's gone. That one's on its way out. What caused it? I don't what think that one's on the way out. I think that's just normal wear. Just, wear just and tear for because that. of the mileage. But you can't get away from the fact that it's got a brand new turbo, which means it probably had turbo failure. And, and run on its own. Yeah. Short of oil. So what other things has it done? What has it caused? So yeah. Without doing a complete top to bottom rebuild. You're never going to be 100%. Sure. No. Sure. So this is what you explained to me this morning. Chris said, I've cleaned that up. I'd rung up the dealer and asked for shells. Yeah, and they, yeah, but they said that they don't sell shells. That's right. Then I rung Q, QC online, Maidstone engine specialist, and he actually sorted us out some caps when we'd done the TDV6. So I'm going to link him in the description. I can't remember his name. And he said, he remembered me, and I said, mate, they won't sell us... They don't sell caps. And he went... Shells. Shells, sorry. And he actually gave me a part number. He said, ring back and ask for this part number. And I rung back and I ordered two shells for it. And they was £13 each. And the only reason we ordered them, and Chris cleaned that up, he said, we can throw the sump back on it and push it in and out. But he just cleaned that up. <laughs> he had nothing on, so he cleaned it up. I'm going to run over and get the shells and... We're actually going to put it back together with them in it. Then we can actually run it up and down the yard, test the gearbox. See what just, it just yeah, it see what it, 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 it Yeah, this is not a permanent repair. This is not a temporary repair. Fix. Yeah, this is a temporary fix. We do not want to be pushing it around the yard for the next two to three months while we're waiting for an engine. So I'm going to whiz over and actually pick them up because they're in now. And then we're going to start the process of yeah, actually putting it back. You could use it. Car, couple of months while we're waiting. That, that'd be all right. You think? Yeah, I think it will. And the oil pump as well, while I wasn't here, you put it on the bench, spun it over, yeah. took the galls off it, went to clean it out, and as soon as you spun it over, yeah, it I, pumped. I filmed a bit of it. Oh, have you? Yeah. It pumped oil everywhere. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we've got no oil pump issues. Normally, the issues on these engines, and I've seen it time and time again, and Chris has as well, is... The turbo goes, it runs on the engine oil. The car will run on the engine oil and it actually starves the car of oil because it's used it all. It ends up going out the exhaust and running the engine on it, essentially. I'm not going to get in-depth about it too much. We are going to start putting it all back together. But Chris just said he has got a bit more recorded, so, of course, I'm going to include that in there as well. But you reckon that this... this that'll, will... that'll run, yeah, and that'll be quiet. Will it really? Oh, it will, yeah. <laughs> Look at the smile on his face, guys. That is confidence. Let's see how we get on. That is that, the new shells. So £27 something it come to. I will definitely have a look before the end of the video, the exact amount. And it just made sense. Chris said, we've, we've putting it back together anyway, put, so we might as well put them in. And that now is perfect. As a, one next to it, huh? There's a little side. tiny, tiny bit of side to side. Yeah, which it always is. And that one has as well. Yeah. So... There's no knock there now, and we've turned over the end of the engine. We've got a couple of bolts in there. We've spun it over, and it's running freely. So 
what I'm just going to whip down, get some glue, because this is actually glued on, the sump here. And uh, we're going to throw it all back together. I, it's very, very interesting, actually. I actually got a phone call last night from uh, a friend of mine that I haven't spoke to for quite a while. And uh, I didn't realise he watched the videos. He said, Rob, I've got an engine for that. And I said, well, how much is it? He said, oh, it's a lovely low mileage engine. I said, how much is it? He said, how much is the car? And I said, nah, it's not going to happen. He was trying to buy the car. He's been waiting for one to come up. So we will find one for it, I'm sure. Let's crack on and get this all back together. Guys, that's the oil pump all back in there and the baffles back on. The little electrical pump there in the oil pump, that's all back in there, bolted down. So we're just going to have a dry run with the sump. Um, we've, Chris actually took all the bolts out of the subframe and you can see we've got it strapped up there, pulling it back as far as we can. And we've got the gearbox stand or engine stand underneath this side holding it up. And what we've done is pulled it back just to give us that bit of extra room just here because that's where we were struggling with it last time it was catching on this corner where it's big there and then it goes quite small so what we're actually going to do now is finish the rest of this off off camera because it is just the reverse process of when we took it all off and like i say we couldn't show a great deal when we done it then so we'll be back once we've got quite a lot of that bolted back on there is a lot there to do sump back on and then of course this cover's all got to go back on the pulley the belt etc so let's move on and get that done I always think I better do a bit of an update. It's been a while, but of course, then I realise that the video comes instantly after the last bit. We are really getting near to the end of putting it all back together now. Did a couple of little schoolboy errors. I, I bolted the start motor on and then we realised that we hadn't put that cover back over the sump. So I had to take the start motor back off, but really moving along with it. Now, when we bought this car... The chap did say the oil light come on, so he stopped at the garage, bought 10 litres or 11 litres of oil, and he actually put quite a lot in it. I have checked the specs on this car, and it is 6.52 litres from empty. Now, when we drained it out, how many litres to them drain trays hold, Chris? That's a good two gallon, isn't it? And it was full up. You couldn't have got another bit in there. So it wasn't actually burning and losing the oil that you thought. And genuinely, anyone sees an oil light, they're going to think it needs oil. So we drained all that out. But fortunately, there was a brand new bottle of Kestrel in it. And because we've had some off, of course, all the oil's gone. And Chris said, we're putting that new oil in it to test it. Let's change the filter as well, just in case there's anything in there. So we're ready to put the wheel on bring it down we're not going to put the splash in there just going to have a look at it when it's running put some oil in it put a filter on it and we're ready to flick the key mate yeah let's see and let's see if it works yep. this is not a permanent fix this is a temporary job that we've done on here now these engines a lot of them online you're welcome to look it up are exchange units and they don't want it in bits it's got to be block head stump etc like that can't have nothing missing so like I said, we were stripping this down anyway to investigate it. I just said to Chris, I can't believe we've got it all done in one video. Over the space of a couple of days, we've actually stripped it and put it back together. So we was just discussing the oil come with it. We had to buy a filter for it and the big end shells. And you just had a total completely. And some sealer. Oh, and some sealer for the sump. Some for what did we spend? 30 odd quid? 48 pound we've spent putting it back together so chris is ready to turn the key he wants to know if it's going to maintain oil pressure That's make, worry, yeah make sure the oil light goes out but at least we're back to where we can actually move it around the yard even though chris said if it rattles again we still can't drive it because a comrade could come through the block you'd, anything could happen and then you just end up with puddles of oil everywhere let me just wipe this camera. Fire it. Timing. That was, that was timing, chain. There was no oil. Turn it off just for one second. I just want to check that there's no... The oil light went out. So it's maintaining pressure. You can fire it back up now, mate. Oh, of course, yeah. So it's 6.2 litres, and we've only put five and a half in it so far. We'll top that up, and we'll run it again. But it was quite rattly, but that's timing, chain. It has been sat. All, all 
drive charge. Oil pump, that all of it. Yeah, I'm sure everybody that's watching, even if you don't know about cars, it has been sat there for two days with a sump off. So every bit of oil that was in there is completely gone. So it did need to get that oil pump to pump it all round. We top it up and fuck. Sorry? Didn't sound like it, mate. We top it up and fire it up again. We've topped off the oil. It was about halfway out the stick. And we did notice a bit of squealing, but we left the wheel arch liner out anyway. So getting there a little bit of lubricant, a little bit of WD in there. And that's actually stopped that squealing. So it does, that's the belt. Give it a little rev. Ain't knocking no more, mate. Put that down. Sounds perfect. <laughs> and just, I did just look, I want to put the bonnet back up, but you might be able to just see some smoke there and all that, and you can see it coming out the bonnet here. And all that is, when you do work on any engine, sorry, I do hope this don't sound like I'm insulting anyone, anyone's intelligence. I do know a lot of people don't know about engines. So me and Chris have had oily gloves on, handprints all over the engine all over the exhaust down there so all of that oil residue does have to burn off i can't believe how quiet that sounds no oil light at uh, all we've got an engine management right we've yeah. had a lot of things unplugged haven't we? yeah so probably need these, let's uh, get it outside and let it warm up for a little while because of the exhaust let's uh yeah no smoke at all fortunately mate we'll have to do another demo of it all right so guys, the engine's not knocking anymore. We can now park this outside, put it in, put it on the back burner until we find that engine. But just before we do go today, we have actually found the root cause of the problem. Chris was doing a bit of research on it the other night. I was doing a bit of research. A lot of people said they suffer with timing chains. And the one post in particular that Chris found was the DPF's block up. And it caught, that is the root cause of the problem because the exhaust gases can't escape and it it kills the turbo. So start it back up, mate. Sorry. So I think you would agree that's running perfect. Rev her up, mate. And again. You can hear that clear as day. Cut it off, mate. So the turbo, we don't know if that... Yeah, we don't know if the turbo's toast. It's, I'd like to think it's unlikely. It's brand new turbo, but clearly there is an issue there. And I would say that that issue is the root cause, the back pressure of... Act can't get rid of the exhaust gas, and it's actually... That's what's knocked the ends out. I think it was a really good ending to the video. We're really happy with it. Of course, we're not going to be revving it up anywhere, so it can be driven around the yard now. Chris won't keep making me push him. But we would have loved to have road tested it. I think that's what we wanted to actually do, is go out and give it a run. We do want to check through, just make sure everything works on it. Um, in the background, of course, I reached out to a few people we know with engines, and the likelihood is one of them will get one reasonably soon. So as soon as one does come up, They'll reach out to us and we'll get on that. It's probably a couple of days work swapping the engine out, but it is what it is. We really hope that you did enjoy this video. Once we was going to strip it down and actually find the problem with it. And then we was like, do you know what? We've got to put it back together now. So we just chuck them shells in it and we filmed that as well. We filmed putting it all back together and starting it up right at the end there. And after the first few seconds, I was pleasantly surprised and Chris just had that grin on his face because he knew it weren't going to knock. He knew it. And that's why he was so confident when I uh, pointed the camera at him and he was smiling. But, yeah, he's got another problem. And hopefully, well, sorry, we will be looking into that, obviously. Hopefully a new engine will come with a turbo and possibly a DPF. That would be nice. Otherwise, a case of getting that one clean. Anyway... Well, I'm going to cut it short there. Anything to add? Um, just off camera, if anyone was interested, I did use a micrometer right. to measure the uh, crank. The crank when you was we, yeah. 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 So you, hopefully you heard Chris there. He used a micrometer to measure the crank journal, and he in pretty. Case, in case it, uh, 
in case it had worn out. So, yeah, that is the end of today's video. If you did enjoy it, guys, please do hit that thumbs up. It really does mean a lot to us, and we really appreciate it. As usual, drop your comments in the comment section. Let us know what you think. I know quite a few of you are going to say you was crazy, and I don't think I could have sat there for over three hours going like that with a piece of parachute cold and some wet and dry. Chris is going like that now. But um, it's all part of it. And do you know what? I think we actually got carried away in this video. We've always said from day one, I'm starting again, and I, we don't buy for content. We buy for profit and we provide content with that. But I think we got a little bit involved in creating content in this one, didn't we? We got a little bit carried away and went a little bit further than what we normally do. But guys, I'll leave it there. I'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.